He is Muhammad Ahmad Anwar from Amalnir village. He used to work on a farm alongside his four siblings and his father. Due to the untimely demise of his father, the land got distributed amongst the children. Taking 10,000 rupees out of his 20,000 rupees inheritance, he then bought shares in Wipro. The 100 shares which he bought in Wipro in 1980 have now grown into 96 lakh shares worth over 500 crores. These are unimaginable numbers for most of us. But people who invest in the stock market, people who know how to play in the market, this isn't a shocker. While Muhammad took over 20 years to build this wealth, it took 20 years for Rakesh Junjanwala to find Titan, which made billions for him. These are some other great investors who made fortunes in the market. While we have these great stories, these legendary investors who have made tremendous amount of wealth in the stock market, the reality is most of the people are scared to invest in the stock market. If you look at India, only 2% of people actually invest directly in the stock market. Reason for that is 90% of people who enter the stock market end up losing money. Why do people lose money when stock markets have done exceptionally well over the long period of time? Answer lies in our human biases. While humans are the smartest species on this planet. We, have, we are capable to design the most complicated systems which are reflected in all the inventions we have done over the years, including the stock market. But, reality, but in certain situations and in certain circumstances, we can act totally irrationally. For example, most of us know junk food is not good for health, but we eat it all the time. Similarly, if you are in a traffic jam, you will notice people keep honking, knowing very well that honking will not ease the traffic. I don't know about the Pune, but in Bangalore, if you're stuck in a traffic, you will notice people driving on the wrong side, sometime on the sidewalk, creating deadlocks, and everybody ends up spending more time on the roads. Why do we behave or misbehave in such manner, knowing very well that this is not helping anybody. Let me do a quick experiment to see how good we are as a group in terms of making financial decisions. Let me give you two options. Option A gives you sure 10,000 rupees. Option B, you have a 50% chance of getting 20,000 rupees or 50% chance of getting nothing. How many of you will choose option A? Looks like most of us will choose option A. 10,000, risk-free 10,000 rupees is far better than riskier 20,000 rupees. Let me give you the same example, but twist the equation a bit. This time, option A, you will lose 10,000 rupees. And option B, you have a 50% chance of losing 20,000 rupees or 50% chance of losing nothing. How many of you will choose option A this time? Looks like few takers for option A. Most of us want to choose option B. If you look at both the scenarios, the options were kind of same. One was short, short payoff, other was bit volatile. But when we were sitting in profit, we were happier to take a risk-free option. But when we saw loss, we were happy to gamble. This is called loss aversion bias. This was first identified by Amos Tversky and Daniel Kahneman. Basically, humans don't like losing. Whenever you encountered with a loss, you want to find a way to avoid that loss. And in the process, you're ready to take bigger risks. This is one of the biggest reasons why people lose money in the stock market. There are many more biases like this in the stock market. Another one which plays out in speculative market is extrapolation bias. In simple term, it means you overestimate the recent events over the past events, over the future events. 
basically if stock market is going up people start believing this will happen forever more and more people enter at the peak and when market starts correcting people still believe that it will go up and by the time they realize trend has changed loss aversion kicks in and you end up losing money another one which plays out during this euphoric times is social proof people think if everybody is doing it and they are making money it must be the right thing to do so you will notice when stock markets at the peak you will hear panwala shushoy boy everybody is talking about the stock market professional belief that is the time to go out of the market good news is you can overcome these biases like any bad habits if you need to overcome them first thing is to acknowledge them that you have some problems once you have acknowledged it half the battle, battle is won then only thing you need to do is find a disciplined approach a methodical approach a rule based approach so that you don't fall in trap of these biases this is exactly what william o'neil did one of the legendary investor in the stock market like many inexperienced investor when he started his career he lost money he tried various approaches from simple tricks to complicated techniques but result was the same he was losing money instead of giving up on investing he paused and introspected and tried to answer the big why's of investing in stock market why do certain stocks outperform others why do other stocks and overall market plays an important role in individual stocks performance why do human emotion play such an important role in markets in quest to answer these question he ended up doing the one of the most comprehensive study on the stock market he invented a new framework called cancelling it is a completely rule based system to avoid emotions from inv investing he looked at more than 100 years of us stock market data and tried to understand why do certain stocks outperform his focus was on the all the leading stocks which made exceptional returns and he tried to understand what were the common characteristics in all of them before they made the big move the most fascinating thing about the study is was strikingly different than many other methods at that time financial parameters like price to earning ratio dividend yield book value he categorically rejected all of them and he didn't find any predicted value in those financial parameters in his study price to earning ratio is a still very popular measure you will hear people talking about all the time in the financial market basically it tells you how expensive a particular stock is what bill noticed in his study most of these big winners were expensive even before they made the big run conventional approach is to avoid stocks which are expensive but what bill found out contrary to that quality comes at a price for example if i have to ask you you need to select an ipl team will you avoid players like virat kohli and mahinder singh dhoni just because they are expensive and replace them with cheaper options most probably not quality comes at a price to win consistently you need to find players with proven track record skill set and not paying attention to what their cost similarly in the stock market if you want to win in the long term you need to pay attention to the excellence the quality price is a secondary so what were these seven characteristics which he found out in these winners as i said he named the study cancelin it's an acronym each letter is a factor which influences these big winners c stands for current earnings basically what you're looking at is the company which you're looking at you're expecting at least 25% or more in their recent quarters every company needs to report their financial statement every 3 months so what you would like to see in the latest financial statement they have grown 25% in terms of profit over the same quarter last year a stands for annual earnings most of these companies have robust business model these guys these companies are not doing well 
only on recent quarter basis, but even on the longer term basis. So what you're looking for is at least three to four years of good growth track record. 25% and above growth in last three years in their profitability. You would also like to see a sales growth along with that profitability. Because if company is growing only its profits without the sales, that means they are cost cutting, which might not be sustainable. N stands for something new. Bill found out most of these great winners had something innovative or something new about them. It can be a new management, new CEO, new product, new regulation in the industry. For example, iShell Motors used to be in many businesses. Then they consolidated and focused on Royal Enfield, the miss size bike business. Since then, stock has gone 100 times. Similarly, Apple was about to be bankrupt, and then Steve Jobs came back in Apple, and then they launched the new product, iPod. Since, that, since then, it has done phenomenally well. Next is supply and demand. S stands for supply and demand. Price is a function of demand and supply. Price of anything, price will not go up till demand is higher than the supply. William O'Neill suggested to use price volume charts to understand the demand supply for any stock. If price is going up over a period, and if demand for the stock, which is reflected in its volume, amount of shares trading on daily basis, is going up, that's a good sign. You would like to pay attention to that. Next is L. L stands for leaders and laggards. You want to invest in leaders and avoid laggards. Leaders are the ones which are growing faster than their peers. They have leading market share. Their products are in demand. They are from the industry which are growing faster than other industries. If you go back a few years back, IT and pharma used to grow faster than other industries. So you want to find these industries and within those industries, try to find the leading stocks within those industries. Next is I. I stands for institutional ownership. In India, as I said, only 2% of people directly invest in the stock market. So most of the market is actually owned by the institutions. These are your mutual funds, insurance companies, foreign institutional investors. They own most of the market. So what you're looking for, some level of ownership from these institutions. These guys have a lot of resources. They do a lot of due diligence on the companies which they are invested in. They are talking to management. So it kind of ensures that there is a thorough job done on the company. They also provide you the liquidity so you can get in and get out of the stock easily. Last but not least is M. M stands for market direction. Bill said you can be right on the first six, but if you're wrong with market direction, you will still lose money. Three out of four stocks follow the market direction. So if market is going up, every Tom, Dick and Harry will go up. But if market is going down, even brightest of stock will go down. Bill developed a totally algorithmic objective approach to understand the market direction. He advised people to look at market averages in India, things like Sensex and Nifty, which are the market averages. You need to pay attention to price volume chart of these indexes to gauge the market direction. When you see all these seven factors coming together, you might have a winner at your hand. Bill also said, investing is a lifelong journey and lifelong skill which nobody can ever take it away from you. This is exactly what 11 year old boy did 75 years ago. He bought three shares for $38 and sold it at $40 and later realizing the same stock shot up to $200. He learned early in his life, there is no instant gratification in the stock market. He's none other than Mr. Warren Buffett, the third wealthiest person in the world. Now it's far easier to learn to invest in the market. With smartphones, internet, most of the information is easily accessible through internet. While there are many virtual systems available where you can trade without money, 
my recommendation is you invest with some money. It doesn't take too much money to start learning to invest in the market. But unless you do it with real money, you will not be able to understand your emotional biases, the emotional ebbs and flow, which happens with your investment going up and down. So my recommendation is try to do it with real money. You will also learn about yourself. You will self-discover and understand your own emotional issues, which you can rectify if you start young. You might lose money in this process, but that's the tuition fee you're paying for the for learning a skill set, a life skill. Bill also said, if you want to become rich, you need to study, get a job, learn to invest, learn to save, and then invest. First three are in your hand. As far as last is concerned, I hope we have made a beginning today. Thank you.